Spent a lot of time talking about college hoops. We still have a little bit of that chatter coming up. Remember, coming up at 10 o'clock, fan tournament tailgate. Tim Donnelly, Dennis Cox, fresh back from Charlotte. And UNC's victory will be on from 10 to 12. And then day two of the round of 64 of March Madness kicks off right here on the fan. It is all day long, starting at noon today. Yes, you're going to get your fill of college hoops for sure. But your Carolina Hurricanes played last night. And they decided to make sure that they got every last minute's worth of a 3-2 overtime win over the Philadelphia Flyers, who find themselves well behind this team in the Metropolitan Division and overall in the standings, find themselves slipping slipping deeper into this three-way abyss with the Detroit Red Wings and Washington Capitals for those wild card slots. The Washington Capitals are the team that the Canes will take on tonight on the road just four hours north at Capital One Arena. But about last night, Seth Jarvis, Mr. Anytime Goal Scorer, right? Six goals, seven games. Graham and I were chopping it up last night as we were talking about perhaps placing some money on the line against uh, the uh, for the Carolina Hurricanes. Seth Jarvis got the game winner in overtime, explains what was going on. I was just trying to handle it because he passed it right when he left his stick. It went about two feet in the air and started hopping. But, uh, yeah, I was, I, there was no doubt in my mind I was shooting that, and uh, I was just happy with him. Five in a row for the Carolina Hurricanes. He was talking about Brent Burns passing him that puck. On a chance just prior to that, it was Sebastian Ajo to Jake Gensel on a two-on-one, and Gensel got stopped. And then it just quickly came back the other way in which Burns was able to poke the puck away on a rush by Philadelphia. And they were able to turn that into two points last night, which is good news for your Carolina Hurricanes as they try to keep pace with the New York Rangers, who did win last night. So the Rangers have two points, no games in hand with 12 games to go. So 96 points for the Rangers, 94 for the Hurricanes. But just as important, getting those two points keeps them in the running for having the top record in the Eastern Conference, in which the Boston Bruins lost. Boston Bruins sit at 97 points. So it's Boston, New York, Florida, and Carolina all at the top, thanks to that 3-2 overtime win, Graham, which Rod Brindamore said it was sloppy, and he was right. Clearly not a great game by us. So um, other than the goaltending and our penalty kill, you know, did a nice job. Got a couple posts there on the 5-1-3, but we were pretty good on that. And... You know, overall, just we needed to be better, you know, that's for sure. But like you said, I mean, it's tough to cry about a win. I mean, I'm happy we got the two points, but we we know we need to be a little bit better. Look, the Hurricanes got away with one, point blank. And a lot of that is also because of Freddie Anderson playing great. Um, Yeah, Anderson's still unbeaten. Yeah, Freddie Anderson's still unbeaten. Welcome back, uh, Great Dane. But it's that time of the season, I don't want to say where, you know, you can get away with playing sloppy, but... As we always say, good teams know how to win when they shouldn't. And the Hurricanes definitely did not look like the better team last night, but they are still the better team than the Flyers, who, again, as you mentioned, are playing desperate right now. They're trying to make a playoff push. And when you mix those two together, you're going to kind of get a good performance by the Flyers. Give them a lot of credit. But at the end of the day, Hurricanes, not every game is going to be great. but And they definitely didn't play their best game. But they got it done when it, when it mattered. Well, well, thanks to Seb Jarvis. Yeah, and we we praised Jarvis pretty hard yesterday on the program. You can run that back if you need to. I mean, he's got four game winners in the five Carolina games. Four. So this is Seth Jarvis's world right now. We're just all living in it. <coughs> Excuse me. We're all doing burnouts in our in our workplace parking lot. And we all should. I mean, why not? I'm like, this is this is one of those runs where he has emerged as a not quite elite score, but certainly a guy that's going to draw attention, much like Jake Gensel did during Jalen Chatfield's goal off the Ajo dime. I mean, point blank, Jake Gensel took two guys with him as he just kind of skated through the zone. I mean, it was deliberate. He knew what he was doing, and you could tell he knew what he was doing because all of a sudden it was just wide open ice for Jalen Chatfield. That's what a guy like Jake Gensel does. That's what a guy like Seth Jarvis is starting to do, too. If you've noticed on the ice, there's a lot more keying on him when he comes out there. And it's a really clever, smart, whatever move you want to call it by Rod Brindamore to pair Jarvis to take him off that stall line and to move him up with Ajo and whoever happens to be there. Again, Tara Teovainen 
uh, hasn't been uh, on the ice in quite a bit dealing with injury, but Jake Gensel has slid into that, and now you've got three dangerous players on this line, which is what you want. Yeah, We all want. Like, as fans, we're just like, sweet, here comes the Ajo line again. And it's still branded as the Ajo line, you know, because it's Sebastian Ajo. But I got Jake Gensel coming at you on one side, and I got Seth Jarvis on the other. It's the mini flying V. Here it comes. Where's the goal going to come from? That's the biggest thing. Where are the points going to come from? The, the, there's no, the question mark is, who is it? It's not how is it, or why is it, or where is it. It's just, who's it going to come from? Because you know it's coming, and other teams have to deal with that. And tonight it's the Washington Capitals who have to deal with that, who will be without Tom Wilson, who I call the NHL's version of... If you remember Ron Artest back in the 90s and 2000s, not afraid to stir it up, or Draymond Green, if you need a little bit more of a reference. <laughs> the Draymond like, Green of, NH- of the NHL. Draymond Green is the Tom Wilson of the NBA. I mean, they, they go back and forth. Tom Wilson did a high stick. He's been, he's been called to the principal's office more times than most players, and he's going to serve a suspension for hitting a guy high. And again, Washington, desperate team. Like, Alex Ovechkin is playing – trying to play out of his mind. He's having another solid yeah. season, 20-plus goals. He's doing what he needs to do. But the rest of the Washington Capitals got to figure it out. And we took Evgeny Kuznetsov. Like, they didn't want him. They were like, he can't help us. Carolina's like, oh, oh hello. We'll take that. We'll take that flyer and see what happens. So far, that flyer has worked. Okay. Now, it's we're only six, seven games into this experiment of having Evgeny Kuznetsov on the ice. And he's still trying to figure out with his team. But he can puck handle. And Washington just doesn't seem to have that right now. And maybe the laziness or the the kind of the the lack of edge from last night was knowing that there were the the Canes knew, like at least in the back of their heads, that they were going to be in back to back fights. Back to back fights. Philadelphia, who just kind of scratched and clawed their way to a to an overtime point. I mean, they got a point to Washington, who finds themselves in the number nine position in the Eastern Conference on the outside looking in. Yeah, but this is going to be a really good measuring stick for the Carolina Hurricanes after not playing up to their potential last night against a team that was scratching and clawing to make the playoffs. You're going on, you're going on the road, a place where you've been playing really good. The Hurricanes have been playing excellent away from home here recently against another team like the Flyers, scratching and claw, clawing to stay in the playoff mix. This is a good measuring stick and a chance for the Hurricanes to go out there and say, we know we're the better team. We know that we can go out there and win. We've beaten these guys already once this season in dominant fashion. Let's go out there and put our foot on their necks. The one thing about uh, the Washington Capitals, Charlie Lindgren's been really solid over the past several games. He has. Like he hasn't, he hasn't uh, given up too much. He's got a number of wins. He got a big win over Vancouver a couple nights ago. So he's he's been very solid. It's going to take a little bit more of an edgier effort by the Canes to sneak anything by him, if that's if that's a word that you can use at this time of the season. Again, we're running out of runway when it comes to getting wins and grabbing points. And for the Carolina Hurricanes, who have now won five in a row, there's only one other team in the division that's on that tear, and that's the Tampa Bay Lightning. And a lot of people don't like facing the Tampa Bay Lightning. Right now, that matchup doesn't seem to be happening because they're a little bit farther back, but they have also won five in a row. There are really, it's the Canes, it's the Lightning on the Eastern Conference side, and on the Western Conference side, the Colorado Avalanche, who have won seven games in a row. There are no hotter teams right now. The Canes should be able to grind out these wins to be able to get wins, but you want to see more solid performances. I hate hearing Rod Brindamore saying, well, it's not a great game by us, but, you know, we got the win, is, is what it is. I think at this point, at this point in the season, you are talking about getting your clocks all in sync. Like, you are roommates, and you know exactly who is brushing their teeth before you go in and take a shower or before you flush the toilet. You have that routine down. Now, we, yes, we did trade for two players. It's not going to be automatic. But the runway and the time is running out on that. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. The North Carolina Courage hit the road for the first time in 2024 as they traveled to Sandy, Utah for their first match of the new season against the Utah Royals at 9.30 tonight. The NESL regular season match will stream live and on demand on NWSL+. Plus. 
Duke head coach John Shire confirmed freshman guard Caleb Foster will miss the remainder of the season with a stress fracture in his ankle yesterday. Prior to the Blue Devils NCAA tournament first round game against 13th seed Vermont tonight at 710. You can listen to that game on 620 AM Buzz Sports Radio or 999 HD2. It's another hockey night in Carolina as the Hurricanes turn around and travel to Washington to take on the Capitals. Pre-game coverage begins at 630 with Stormwatch hosted by Adam Gold. Putt drop is at 7. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. This is how tired some of us are this morning. Paul Ihander here, Instagram Hill on the ones and twos. We could have kicked off the program with this nugget, but we didn't based on literally just forgetting because there's been a lot going on. <laughs> Graham Hill remembered about two minutes ago that he was at the bell tower this morning. It feels like it was such a long time ago, and it really was. It was really like maybe I don't want to give away how much how long I was staying out last night with you right here on the program, dude. I was up till one. I was up till two. Seven hours ago, I couldn't sleep. Seven so, hours yeah, you ago, and I, were in the I was same on Hillsborough boat. Street. You were on Hillsborough Street seven hours ago. What was that like? Man, I mean, it was just as exciting as it was when they won the ACC tournament. And one of the reasons why I went. Last night is because last week and I had duties I was filling out in Greenville, North Carolina. So I kind of missed out on the whole like biggest night in Raleigh. And so I wanted to make up for it. And I was going to go out there to post content for our fans' uh, social media accounts. And it was one of those moments where I would just kind of forgot about it because I was like, this is really cool yep. to be a part of. <laughs> so you were just out there with several hundred, right? Like several hundred people were there when you yeah. were there at 1 30 this morning. Yep. That's Some a- people still might be out there <laughs> sleeping. Sleeping, like yeah. So yeah, that's that's the kind of that's, that's the, kind, the of, kind of vibe we've been on this week, right? With, with all the sports coverage, yeah, it has been. It we've been on a heater. There's no doubt about it. I use that a lot. And so today, the women's tournament, we've gotten past the first four. We're going to switch gears just a shade here because you're going to have to start picking and choosing what you're going to dig into this weekend. So this morning, Carolina women take on Michigan State. That is at 11:30. Okay, that's at 11:30. That is on national TV. You able to catch that one? If UNC advances. Out of that game, they will most likely play South Carolina. So that's uh, that's a, that's a run back from earlier this season, and that is Don Staley's crew, who happens to be the only team uh, in the Final Four. And when you talk about sports betting, is the only team that if you place a ten dollar bet, you're only going to make about eight dollars back. Who would have had their sports bingo card, by the way, that North Carolina would be playing Michigan State in the men's bracket of the NCAA tournament, and then the women would be playing Michigan State in the women's side of the bracket not many not many uh for sure uh duke women play richmond today that's a 7 10 seed matchup that is a 2 30 this afternoon you'll be able to listen to that game on uh 96.5 fm 99.3 fm in the triangle so that one will be on the air and then the state women who are hosting this weekend so if you find yourselves not getting a restaurant reservation late saturday it, it's you know it, it's because there are three other basketball teams in town, and I've seen some of the buses. Call media is now. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. There you go. I've seen some of the buses around uh, town already. State is playing Chattanooga, so the Lady Mocks. That is Saturday at 2.30 at Reynolds, so that's going to be good. And they have a doubleheader because they are hosting the first and second rounds. State, a three seed. Chattanooga, a 14 seed. So that is at 2.30 on Saturday. Saturday sets up crazy as well for basketball. All day long here on The Fan, you'll have basketball action uh, as we will have uh, no canes to force you to move over to our Buzz Sports Radio or other partners. So Saturday will be a busy day for men's college basketball, especially here locally. You'll have Michigan State and Carolina at 530 and then Oakland NC State at 710. So those two games are colliding uh, quite a bit when it comes uh, to Saturday. And Sunday has that same kind of mode, too, depending on what happens with Duke tonight. And then you do have a Canes game back at PNC as well against Toronto. And Wake Forest, who we have not mentioned at all, did advance in the NIT earlier this week against App State. Wake Forest is playing Georgia on Sunday afternoon in Winston-Salem. So a ton of college basketball. Let's get you set up for what's happening today here locally. So coming up next, Tim Donnelly, Dennis Cox, a special drive fan fan tournament tailgate starts at 10 o'clock. They'll take you up to noon. At noon today, we'll move on over to college basketball. Men's college basketball schedule will be in full effect. 
early game is Northwestern and Florida Atlantic. Other great games today include the number one seeds. They're all in the mix today, UConn and Stetson. Clemson takes on New Mexico in another one of those 6-11 battles, right? NC State emerged as the 11 team. Duquesne emerged as the 11 team yesterday. And Oregon as the 11 team emerged as well. This is the last 11 seed to play, and they're playing Clemson. And New Mexico is a heck of a of an 11 seed. So we'll have basketball all the way up until 6.30 tonight. 6.30 tonight will be Storm Watch with Adam Gold. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll have puck drop between the Canes and Washington Capitals. At that point, college basketball will move to our sister stations over on Buzz Sports Radio. And you'll have uh, all the late games over there. But the primary game, obviously, will be Duke and Vermont. The pregame starts at 6 o'clock for Duke and Vermont on Buzz Sports Radio. That is like I mean, my gosh, all. that is all. <laughs> Did the we stuff. miss anything? Is there anything? Is there a cricket match that we didn't mention? <laughs> a Premier <laughs> League game, or that just no? I, I feel like I need to go buy another TV as soon as this show's over with, just so I can have at least one more way to watch all the sports that are going on this weekend. There are people with media rooms, I'm sure, and some of y'all can relate as you're driving around today, thinking about, oh my goodness, Paul and Graham just laid out all these things that are happening. Uh, when it comes to college sports, especially locally. Like, I've, I'm really heavy on the fact, and I, I said this to uh, one of our uh, salespeople who walked in the building as early as you and I got here this morning, and I said, this might be one of the bigger sports weekends in the Triangle in its history. Not for the magnitude of the games, but just for all the teams, all the local teams that we cover in action. Right, and the fact that there there is a local portion of the women's tournament that is here, and that you have a Canes-Toronto game. So you're going to have even more people in town for that game on Sunday. Yes, we get O-Canada. We We get O-Canada at the NC Arena. We get get two anthems on Saturday. And so, again, not to get way ahead of ourselves here. Again, the, the timeline for a lot of teams really begins today with UNC women, Duke women playing today, and Duke men playing today. That one game at a time, one game at a time. Duke, uh, for those of you who missed it earlier, uh, minus 12 and a half, and you know, that's that's the number where they're at. The over under is 132, so uh, not bad there. And for those of you, uh, I tweeted out last night, I tweeted out a big thank you to the 11 seeds who did me well yesterday, who did me incredibly well, including you state fans who still might be waking up to the news, incredibly enough. And I saw a few tweets about this last night. You know, waking up in the middle of the night to find out that State won and it advanced and not paying attention to the games of the bracket yesterday, but finding out that they'll be playing 14 seeded Oakland on Saturday night for the right to move on to the Sweet 16. Did I get a parking ticket last night? So worth it. <laughs> do, do you? The question is, do you remember getting the parking ticket and where did you place it? Because a lot of the people that you were with on Hillsborough last night and a lot of people who just stayed up late. I mean, we stay up so you don't have to, but I know a lot of you did. So congratulations for making it through and getting to a Friday morning because there's even more happening today. And you can embrace it and love it up and get behind your teams and cheer loudly because this is the time where we can all be fans. We can be fans of each other to a certain extent.